it doesn't matter how much you play a game, there'll always be a time when that rules reference you thought you'd seen for the last time is needed. But then, what if the I do not have a Scooby what to do here is a weird one, and the instructions are as clear at clarifying the matter as a cat with cue cards would be? My name is Benji, and this is the most common rules queries and mistakes you'll encounter playing Marvel Champions. So we kick off this little educational sermon with some general pointers, overlooked rules, and those not often seen. To start, we have a two-for-one special. When discarding cards from an identity or encounter deck, most often when searching for a specific card, you only check what's still in the deck. If you draw the last card and nudder, then you forget you ever heard the word reshuffle and move on. In a similar vein, an encounter card is drawn or acceleration token is taken immediately upon drawing the last card of the respective identity or encounter deck. Only cards with counters that have the word uses on them are discarded once their counters have been expended. If not, it stays in play, which can of course be useful if you're ever forced to discard a card. And speaking of discard, remember the game uses that word as a catch-all term for cards in your hand or in play. So unless a card is explicit where you discard it from, pick anything eligible. When something does indirect damage, it requires you to assign said damage to friendly characters, but only to the limit of their health. Any remaining there must be assigned to identities regardless of whether they're in hero form or not. Unique cards affect the whole table, so not just identities and allies, but also supports and upgrades can fall foul of this. However, in the case of the former, you can still play cards with different subtypes, for example the multiple versions of the Spider-Man persona. But when assessing commonalities with identities, make sure you consider the names of both the alter ego and hero sides of identities combined. When confused or stunned, you are unable to initiate the act of thwarting or attacking, so no triggers or interactions that are enabled off the back of those actions. Act as if you were going to do the thing, and then discard the status card instead. Likewise with Tough, the first time the character is assigned a source of damage, it receives none, so no damage procs whatsoever. And talking of non-optional triggers, if a response or interrupt doesn't say forced in front of it, then well, the choice is yours. But the minute, and I mean the minute, you see F-O-R-C-E-D, don't even think about skipping it. Its triggering condition is met, and you do what it tells you. Speaking of which, if there is an issue of timing and the sequence in which card effects resolve, then always consider that constant or passive abilities are applied first, then forced interrupts take place followed by the regular kind, and then finally forced responses come before those of the non-false variety. The final three before we move on to the player phase, and they're all short and sweet. When a card says pay a printed type of resource, you cannot use a wild one as a substitute. Not at all similarly, when a character has the retaliate keyword, it has to survive the incoming damage for it to do its damage back. And although somewhat nichely, if damage vanquishes a villain stage, the next stage of the villain must have retaliate as well for it to go off. And finally, even if a cost to do something is a positive, such as healing an identity, you still need to be able to do all the requirements to get the benefit of the action. Now picture the scene then, you're a player, you sit in the very midst of the player phase, and you play a hero action while in alter ego form, which you didn't realise was a big no-no until after the devil on your shoulder calls you a cheater. Make sure you're in the right form to play certain cards. If it says alter ego something something, it doesn't mean you can be in hero form for the lols, and vice versa. When a card triggers something when an enemy is defeated, then that also applies when a villain stage is conquered. Unfortunately though, there is no damage overspill to the next stage. And don't forget, all status cards and attachments still stay on the boss when you advance. Any card that says the word action on it can be quote unquote requested and used by other players on their turns. 
that includes cards on the table or from your hand so long as you have the resources to pay for them either from hand or from resources in your play area. When one is forced to or even offered the opportunity to change your identity's form from a card ability, they can still choose to use their once per turn form flip in the regular way. Now don't go thinking rules, mishaps, confusions don't take place in the villain phase because we have a laundry list of shenanigans to get through here. First up is that whilst you may be dealt a face down in Kainter card at any point during a round, you only reveal and deal with them during that one particular step of the villain phase after each player has drawn their mandatory encounter card for the phase. One of the classic rules confusions comes from the difference between encounter cards being revealed and those that are put into play. Once again, they are only revealed when the prescribed step of the villain phase takes place, and notably during setup as well. Any other time an encounter card is placed face up in the play area, it is put into play, and therefore any when revealed effects do not take place. Keep a keen eye as well on the language on boost cards. Some, most notably minions, are put into play as part of the boost action, and so as per the above understanding, the when revealed action does not take place. When a minion is put into play by a boost card during a villain's prescribed activation, it will subsequently attack. However, if a villain is forced to activate and draw a boost card due to the ability on another card outside of that sequence, then a minion would not attack until the relevant step of the villain phase. But if a minion has the quick strike keyword and is revealed as an encounter card, then it will attack you, but only if you're in hero form. For those perplexed by the hinder keyword on schemes, it's basically a means to apply a keyword to threat placed on a scheme when it's revealed. Before that, side schemes came in all types of configurations, but now Hinder is generally used to provide the threat per player count, and the scheme's starting threat will be a fixed amount, regardless of player count, and or whether the card has been revealed or not. You must declare your intent to defend before boost cards are turned face up. No foresight or soothsaying for you. Furthermore, and somewhat tenuously linked to this, is if a boost card happens to do direct damage instead of adding damage to the villains, then it does so prior to the villain's source of damage. And that can be relevant when said damage defeats an ally, which will then leave the villain's actual attack undefended. Cards with the action keyword cannot be used under any circumstances in the villain phase. Interrupt, response and resource keywords can be activated however. But that's not to say that there are not a number of attack, thwart and obviously defend cards that are not actions. If any excess threat cannot be placed on the current stage of the main scheme then it does not carry over to the next stage. And speaking of schemes, those that force players to draw encounter cards do not require every player at the table to do so just the player that triggered the response. Similarly, hazard icons only require players to draw one extra encounter card, not one per player. And the same goes for acceleration icons that add one extra threat only to the main scheme. And for our penultimate tidbit, when given the choice, normally the choice of two bad things, such as those found on an identity's obligation, you must pick one that changes the game state in some way. Which leaves us with what really amounts to some honourable mentions quickfire style. Pay bloody attention to cards that last until the end of the phase or until the end of the round. It makes a big difference. Cards that say attack, thwart or defend trigger other cards that reference you doing those things. It's not just turning your identity sideways. And you can still use abilities on exhausted cards so long as exhausting isn't part of the cost. And that there is as comprehensive a list of rules mistakes people make that I can imagine mustering. I poured every inch of the interwebs to supplement the list with my own mistakes that I'd learnt the hard way from, and here we are. I do hope you found this helpful. Alas, I've been the voice in your head, and this video has ended.